the crypto space has been very turbulent lately, just to say the least. It is going up and down with all kinds of gyrations. To make sense of it all, I have a chance to share a treat with you. I had an interview with an amazing man, Stan Larimer. Now, Stan, if you don't know about him, he is widely known in the crypto space as the godfather of bit shares. He is the person that really knows about what's going on with that amazing coin. He is also the president of Cryptonomics, a company that's based in the Blacksburg, Virginia area. And he has his master's of science in electrical engineering. He is literally a rocket scientist, has taught rocket scientists at the United States Air Force Academy, has advised with companies like Boeing, Grumman, Lockheed Martin. He knows this stuff and he knows crypto very well. By the way, his, he is the father of Dan Larimer, who is the person who wrote the code for Steemit and for BitShares and for EOS. Oh, yeah. So Stan is in good company there. He is a person that is a brilliant genius. And not only that, you're going to see this in the video. He really comes across in a gracious, kind way. He is giving and caring, and so you want to get ready to learn a lot on not only what's going on with cryptos today, that's important, but also how to think long-term. Stan addresses this, and you are going to love it. So get your pen and paper ready to go or your note-taking device of choice to find out about what's going on with cryptos, how you need to think, and we're going to learn it from Stan Larimer. seeing a lot of excitement there and boy we have seen some wild rides lately and to find out what's going on look at some of the trends and to get some perspective on what is happening we have a special guest joining us right now the man who is the godfather of bit shares stan larimer stan thanks so much for joining us today well thank you terry i'm glad to be here it is an honor to have you here, sir. You are a legend in the world of cryptocurrencies and what you're doing with BitShares is just amazing. And so what we want to do today is to tap into that wonderful brain of yours and find out a little bit about what you see going on in the world of cryptocurrencies with, yes, with Bitcoin, but also BitShares and some of the other currencies. And how does someone make sense of all this roller coaster up and down turbulence that's going on and uh, make some sense of it? Tell us uh, what your thoughts are on that. Well, it's the best of times and it's the worst of times. It's a time of opportunity, both to make a lot of money and to lose a lot of money. And, uh, you know, I guess we can't complain about that because you can't really have one without the other. So we're out there now. The world is just waking up to the potential of digital currencies. And, uh, and you see that in terms of the enthusiasm of people coming into the market. Yeah, we're seeing a lot of people coming in there. And uh, uh, with all the turbulence that's going on, uh, we've seen a really wild ride for many of the currencies that are out there. Uh, what do you recommend for people to kind of maintain composure, to not go freaking out with everything? Oh, my, it's this high or, oh, no, it's gone this low. How do we keep that level keel and uh, take the right approach? Well, I think there's no substitute for, you know, teaching yourself. I know that when you see the things going to the moon like this, there's a tendency of, I got to get in, I got to get in. But, you know, it's like a trolley car. It'll be by again. It goes up and it goes down. And uh, if you didn't get on it this time, you know, maybe it's not such a good time to get onto it when it's peaking higher than, peakier than it's ever been before. Usually it goes through a, a little reset process uh, every, after every peak. So if you didn't get on it this time, then uh, maybe just use this opportunity to motivate you to educate yourself on what the opportunities are. Maybe buy a little bit and just co dollar cost average over time and wait for the next dip to load up. Uh, I think that'll be better. Of course, uh, if you're in it for the long haul, then any time's a good time to buy because I think it's going to just keep going up as more people start moving into the industry. Yeah, I think uh, we see a lot of that, that people are saying, okay, it's not going to just be buy it today and sell it tomorrow, but look at the long term. We've got a lot uh, more good coming that way. One of the things that you've talked about before that I find particularly helpful is the way that we now approach life and how 
cryptocurrencies and bit shares particularly gives the average person who might not be able to have even a bank account in many countries around the world they not or someone who's just getting started tell us about the freedom and the opportunities for liberty that people have by using cryptocurrencies like bit shares and others and how this is a real revolution in our world well you know back just a couple hundred years ago or even less than that uh, you know, people could interact with each other and everything was local. There was really no long range stuff except for a few people. So you could meet people, look them in the eye and pass a coin back and forth between the two of you. And you had this peer to peer economy. And then as the world grew, we got to where we were dealing with everybody around the world. But to do that, we had to go through the middlemen, the banks. And that gave us for a while uh, new kinds of prosperity, new kinds of things we could do, but it also brought us into a more and a more of a control mentality as other forces start building on top of that and uh, saying this is an opportunity for us to exert control over everyone. So we would like to see if we can't use the electronics that are out there to take us back to that earlier time where we have all the advantages of a global economy but the ability to do peer-to-peer. -peer. And we take those central authorities and move them to the out, outer rim. So all transactions don't have to go through them, but we can reach out and get their help when we need it, and then deal peer-to-peer -peer on a global scale. Yeah, that sounds nice. Peer-to-peer -peer on a global scale. And by the way, for those of you that are watching this, that's tweetable. Yes, <laughs> and we can do that with the cryptocurrencies. It really gives the power, I see it, as power to the individual. And it's no longer in the hands of you got to uh, say, oh, please, Mr. Banker, please give me money. We just go out and get it and we become our own bank. And so we see there's a lot of good. Now, one of the currencies, I know you focus on bit shares a lot, but you also know a thing or two about uh, Steemit. Uh, we don't want to get into all the detail on that, but just for those that are watching this, I know many people will be using Steemit, they're watching it. Uh, what are some pointers that you could give for being successful in using Steemit? What should you, what should they do? What would you recommend? And what would you recommend they avoid doing in Steemit? Well, you know, Steemit is a place where you can post uh, any kind of content and if people like it and vote for it, you get some cryptocurrencies. So instead of like with Bitcoin, you need to be a geek and you need to have a computer that's running some software that uh, competes to win some coins for you. Here, you're competing by saying smart things or things people like. It doesn't necessarily have to be smart. It could just simply be something people say like. And every day, Steam it gives out some digital currency for that purpose. So to do that, there's really no substitute to either be liked or to produce some type of content that people do like. And uh, of course, you can be a tree falling in the forest and nobody hears your sound if you don't get it out there. So people try different strategies to get noticed. I mean, it's taken me a long time. I've been doing it for two years now and uh, have slowly, slowly, slowly built up some followers. I have maybe 4,000 followers on there right now, but I didn't on the first day. First day, I just had a few, but then I would go around to other places and I would link to my articles on Steam to get people from other places to come see it. And you know, I participated in conversations. I would go to other people's postings and I would put a, post good comments in there or try to post good comments. And when I did that, uh, sometimes that got me noticed in the other way. Um, and so that's what most people do who are successful in this is gradually build up a following and uh, be good citizens inside there. And, you know, not, not always, and that's, Steam, it is one of the more polite environments there, possibly because people do want to be liked and there is a financial sense incentive to be liked. And there's a few bad apples, but those are there everywhere. Yeah, that's true. I like what you're saying. It's a combination of being liked and helping others, and then also providing really good information that people go, hey, I like that. And you've done a marvelous job of that. And by the way, for those that might want to bounce over and follow you, what the work you're doing on Steemit, etc., I understand you're at Stan. Is that correct? Yeah, and Steemit is with two E's, so it spells Steemit, 
facebook.com slash at Stan. Absolutely. Well, we know that's a good uh, uh, tool and we're using it a lot. I'm enjoying Steam it more and more. But one I want to really talk with you about is BitShares. Mm-hmm. You're the godfather of BitShares. For someone who says, what is that? I don't know. Tell us a little bit kind of the Reader's Digest version as you do it so well. Tell us about BitShares and how it is uniquely different and some of us would say even better than many of those other cryptocurrencies out there. Tell us a little bit about BitShares. Okay. Well, uh you know, Bitcoin's been around since 2009, BitShares since about 2013. Uh, it was developed by my son, Dan Larimer, and uh, he had this vision of saying, hey, if you can put uh, one coin like Bitcoin on blockchain and, and have it be incorruptible and decentralized and uh, peer-to-peer, what would happen if you put an entire company on the blockchain and uh, have it do multiple services. And his vision was to put a smart coin factory on there. So on one blockchain, you could have hundreds of coins that people could create and offer backed by different things or using different algorithms that don't require backing and have an exchange in there so there was no centralized risk of bad things that happen with centralized exchanges. And so that's what he built. Uh, He called me out of retirement in, 2013 to help him run his company. And uh, then he went on to develop the rest of BitShares while I stayed sort of in the background. But then he went on to develop Steemit and went on to develop EOS these days and left me behind with his firstborn to, you know, sort of raise, raise the, uh, the thing. But I didn't want to call myself, since he's the father of BitShares, I didn't want to be the grandfather of BitShares. So, all right, I'll be the godfather of BitShares. That's good. I like that. Godfather is a good thing. Well, what are some of the distinct advantages that uh, you see from your point of view? We understand I'll be a little bit biased, but that's okay. I like BitShares and all full disclosure. I've used it. I enjoy it. I want to get to know more about it. For those, so for someone that's watching this right now and goes, well, what is that BitShares thing? Tell them what that is. Well, first thing we did was get rid of mining, which everybody thinks is the essential ingredient of Bitcoin. And how can you possibly have a digital currency without mining? And yet today, over half of the transactions that happen in all the world on all the blockchains are done using Dan's real-time technology. They don't use mining. So that's mining amazing. Is in the minority these days, even though Bitcoin, the biggest gorilla of all, has got a market cap that's you know somewhere north of Jupiter. Uh, it's still not processing as many transactions as the, the new real-time technology that we have. So uh, that particular thing, and the, when I say that, I mean you, you add up all the events that happen on the Steemit blockchain, on BitShares blockchain, and a few other smaller ones that use the same technology, and you get over half. Uh, the real busy or important thing is if you go to Blocktivity dot info, which is a nice little site like CoinMarketCap ranks things in terms of their market cap. Blocktivity does in terms of their utilization. And you see sitting at the top of this is Steemit. And then the next three uh, exchanges, or the next three blockchains, uh, in some order, BitShares, Bitcoin, and Ethereum take turns uh, on any given day in terms of who's doing the most. But Steemit and BitShares have the records that are greater than the next two uh, brand X is combined. That is quite a feat, Stan. It <laughs> says a lot. And those of you watching this, listen to what he just said. You might want to rewind this one or click back there. You know, They are doing so much now with um, Steam, with BitShares, and it's because they've got the technology. And by the way, it processes fast. Stan, I wonder, I'm, before we were recording, I mentioned something to you that uh, I did using BitShares, and I'd like you to comment. And for those of you that are watching this, you'll get an idea. I was talking to a mutual friend of ours, Stan, you know Paul, and we were talking Paul was over uh, in Greece that time. Paul, you're probably watching this now, so hello. We hope you're doing well, giving you a big thumbs up. And I was talking to him about coming to work with him, doing some uh, things, and he sent me uh, the money. How much would it be? I told him it'd be this amount. We figured it out. And he said, okay, I'll send it. I was on BitShares. He was. And it took all of about, oh, I think two, three seconds. I'm sitting there, wait, well, not very long. Three (laughs) seconds, everybody. I know some of you have your mouth dropped right now. And by the way, the transaction fee, I think was somewhere around 25 maybe 26 cents. It was amazing. Now, of course, it's going to vary according to what you're doing. But Stan, is that typical? And how is it that BitShares is able to do that versus some of the other coins? Well, if you go back in time to 2013, when we first did this, our Chinese investor who first sent us some Bitcoin coins to get started on BitShares, uh, he sent me, it took him one hour 
uh, for the Bitcoins to get to me uh, from China. It took me another hour to send them over to England where I traded them for dollars and then it took the system three to five days to wire the dollars back so I could make payroll. Mm. And wow. uh, you know, it, at that time, it was maybe three dollars or something like that to send bitcoins. So it, you know, that was not very bad. Uh, it, where it was like thirty dollars to send a wire uh, back to me. Uh, to compare that these days on BitShares, like you said, three seconds. And meanwhile, because Bitcoin has kind of become a victim of its own success, uh, it's got so many people wanting to use it. And it's got only maybe seven to 14 transactions per second for the whole world to share. So everybody who wants to send something has to put their transaction into a bucket called the memory pool. And uh, they all get sorted in there based upon who's willing to pay the most to have their transaction happen. And so the miners every 10 minutes come by and scoop off the cream off the top, the uh, transactions that are most profitable and pack as many of them into one 10 minute block as they can and then send it out. And then the next miner comes along and scoops up some more cream and people coming in willing to pay more are going to see more are going to bubble the top. And if you didn't pay enough when you sent it, then you could sit in that memory pool for a long period of time without getting serviced. And so I've had it take three days just recently uh, because I didn't put enough money in to send Bitcoin somewhere. I just had three weeks, literally three weeks waiting. And it was just uh, really, really bad. It's, I mean, it's un one thing to wait for a little bit. We understand maybe a 30 minute wait or so, but if it's going to be three weeks and I lost uh, on the one particular transaction over $2,300. 2300 because of the price going down, et cetera, versus when I did that. Now we're getting into serious money here and serious time. Yeah. And so you can avoid that by paying a lot more, but people were paying during that time frame about $45 to send a Bitcoin somewhere to get to the head of the queue. Okay. So we came along and said, all right, what's wrong with this picture? And Dan quickly concluded that mining was what was wrong with the picture because think about what mining really is. It's nothing but a lottery uh, where people all gang up on their computers to guess a magic number. And they take 10 minutes to guess that magic number. And then whoever finds that magic number at that time gets to sign the next block certifying that it's correct. Then they all play that contest again. But that takes time. If you, and when Dan got rid of the uh, mining from the system, uh, he uh, eliminated the need to do that. Now he has the people signing the blocks uh, much more highly decentralized than you have in Bitcoin. And they take turns in a random order. Uh, and so there's no time waiting. Uh, we, can st we can crank the time down to where we're limited by the speed of light and the size of the planet. Nice. I like that. <laughs> speed of light and size of the planet. Two good variables. <laughs> Uh, now, to be fair, we were conservative at three seconds. Uh, Dan, in his EOS system, has now optimized it some more by actually synchronizing what node goes next so it follows the rotation of the Earth, time zone by time zone. And by doing that, you're not jumping to one side of the planet in random order. You're sort of doing it in a sequence around the planet, and you could squeeze it down to where maybe uh, half a second is the limit as you hand off to the next time zone. Uh, as you go around the planet. I like it. That sounds good. I'd be somewhere near that north side of Jupiter, too, that we could do it a little bit better. Well, there's a lot going on with that. And so I know those uh, that are watching this might want to go out and check out BitShares. Matter of fact, we know that prices can change and we don't know what the future is going to hold. It can go up. It can go down. It could stay the same. I predict it's going to be one of those three. It's either going to go up, go down, or am I pretty smart on that one, Stan? What do you think? Yeah, I'm not so sure, sure about the stay in the same part. But yeah, the stay in the same doesn't happen very often. But we do know that it is, uh, has changed. For instance, in the month of December, uh, before we started recording, you were telling me what it was, and I looked at what it is right now. I noticed just as we're recording this, it's 82 cents. Mm -hmm. What was it the uh, month of December, which is uh, about 30 days ago from the time we're recording this? Yeah, it started out at 13 cents back then, way back in the Paleozoic era <laughs> of uh, well, early December. And uh, it's just sort of started to uh, pick up. And part of that's due to the fact the whole industry is experiencing growth. But part of that is due to, I think, this increasing number of companies and people waking up to that difference we've talked about in performance. And uh, it, I We've hinted a little bit about some of the companies that are moving onto the BitShares platform. They, they spent 
2017 developing for one of the other uh, famous platforms and then found out that that platform was clogged up and couldn't handle the, the traffic. And so a lot of them are saying, wait a minute, we can't launch because uh, we're gonna, we already have millions of customers. What happens when those millions of customers start coming to our site and we tell them you gotta wait three days or even three hours? <laughs> you know, um, yeah. so uh, every place I go to, all the boardrooms I walk into, I ask them, well, how many transactions are you going to have per second with this new marvelous service you're offering? And they usually say, oh, you know, we're going to have hundreds, maybe thousands of transactions per second. We'll be operating at Visa levels of transactions, which is 2,000 to 4,000. You know, I mean, yeah. we're, going, we're going to really rock it. And I say, well, you understand the network you've built on has 25 transactions per second, best case for the whole world to share. And you're going to use more than that yourself. And there's 200 other companies out there that have spent the year building the same kind of thing you're building for their wonderful idea. They're all going to jump on. And you're going to have, you know, Washington, D.C. Beltway traffic, uh, you know, a complete blockchain gridlock. Uh, and that's where you're going to launch your new business. And it's because of them. I mean, it usually takes most astute CEOs uh, 29 seconds for them to turn pale and then say, OK, we got to do something after they go do the due diligence to see whether I was really telling them the truth or not. Yep, exactly. Well, there's some amazing, uh, amazing opportunities there with BitShares. And for those of you that are watching this, uh, we're not telling you what to do. We're not financial advisors, but we are saying get educated. Go out there, study what's available, look at BitShares, uh, what it is and where it's going. And uh, so, when well, Stan, while we've got you here, what I want to do is I'm going to reach through the screen here, twist your arm just a little bit there, uh, not initiating force, but just twist it a little bit there, and have you tell us a little bit about the trends, of what you see going, where you see us moving with that. If you can get that, reach under your desk there, get that crystal ball out there, make sure the batteries are good in it, rub it really well. What do you see for trends and for the future? I'm talking really long term here, like uh, 12 months for the for cryptocurrencies what's going on well I kind of hinted at a couple trends already uh, mining is going to disappear because it can't compete and uh, so any uh, any of the venerable blockchains that are built on mining are going to be forced with the tough decision of giving up that mining which is their source of profit or serving what the industry needs so that's one thing there'll be a trend towards real-time uh, systems that can keep up with the traffic that's happening. And we've talked about that a little bit. Another whole big trend is a flight to safety. Now, one of the things that we've had during the past year is this explosion of something called ICOs, initial coin offering. Sometimes they're called initial token offerings, but whatever they're called, they're a opportunity to invest in something. And a lot of times people don't, do their due diligence, don't do their homework, and they buy coins that really are not backed by much of anything. Some of them might be outright scams. And worse, some of them might be perfectly honest uh, shares in some company, but guess what? That's a security. And you know the American and Chinese authorities are coming, and European for that matter, authorities are coming after people that are doing unlicensed securities. It doesn't matter whether you're on the blockchain or not. That's just the medium at which you're offering uh, a security for sale, uh, you still got to obey the security laws. So what's that mean as a trend is there will be a flight out of that. The first time they crack down on a few of those companies and confiscate the investment dollars that are in those companies and put the people who did that in jail, everybody else who holds anything like that is going to be saying, I got to sell all those kind of things and buy things that are high quality and that means either clearly not a security or something that uh, admits it's a security and does all the paperwork and pays all the delays and everything that we don't like in order to get something that is a admitted security high quality offering and then people will be buying that so if you are thinking about doing an ICO it would probably be worth your while to either make sure you're not a security or admit your security, go get the right paperwork backing it up, and then you've got this wonderful catcher's mitt for a lot of that money that is going to be fleeing to safety, and you can grab some of it, and that'll be a big trend in the coming year. 
I like it. So those of you watching this, get that mitt up there that you can catch and you get all those coins coming your way. Find out how to do it. Get the education. And Stan, if someone says, hey, I want to get to know more about this, uh, where could they go? What websites would you recommend for them to find out about? How do they get BitShares? How can they access some of this that you're talking about? Well, BitShares.org is the uh, main site that allows you to get a wallet and get an account and learn. And uh, please spell that for us. For those that might not be native English speakers, how, how do we spell that? Very slowly and carefully. B-I-T-S-H-A-R-E-S dot org. Very good. And uh, then we have another place that uh, is going to get increasingly interesting, BillionHeroCampaign.com. Yeah, That's tell us about that. <laughs> well, we wanted to, we recognize that we're going to be moving outside the digital currency industry per se, where all the geeks dwell and the people who have grown up and spent a lot of time studying it. And we're going to be reaching out to people who don't even know how to spell Bitcoin. And uh, so these type of people need a little bit of extra help in order to uh, get on board. So we created a website that makes a little bit of a game out of it, um, it lets you go in uh, the, the game has to do with uh, selecting how we're going to give away a billion dollars. And uh, what we did was uh, back in June, we put a, when BitShares price was worth 33 cents, we put in 3 million BitShares, which is a million dollars worth of BitShares, into an escrow that we said, we think we can grow that by a factor of a thousand, uh, just like Bitcoin and Ethereum had grown by a factor of a thousand. We had already grown by a factor of 200 at that point. And so we are saying, yeah, we think we can go forward and, and grow at that kind of rate. And we have right now, we're, that, that little prize that we want to give away is at 2 million. We only need to actually now go up by a factor of 500 to get to our billion dollar giveaway. People who come and play the game and learn how to get a wallet, and get some free uh, play money to try out and, uh, and get some helping hands on how things are working are going to get to vote for which of 12 good causes. Uh, we're going to give that money away to. And the other exciting thing right now is that we're starting to get some uh, celebrities who are saying, yeah, I like that model. I want to do that kind of model. And yeah. we just announced uh, yes. super exciting. Evander Holofield has decided to step up as the first uh, megastar, if you will, to say, I like that model. I want to go do that same thing. He says, I'm going to go raise a million dollars worth of donations and use bit shares to grow it to a billion dollars. And his particular cause is uh, disaster preparedness, disaster relief. What's the difference between disaster relief and disaster preparedness? Well, relief is you wait until the disaster hits, then you go try to raise money to come in and help people. And meanwhile, people suffer and wait for the government to come along and help them. And a lot of things don't get done. Disaster preparedness is saying, let's raise a little bit of money now. Let's grow it to a big fund that's ready to go the instant a disaster hits. And if necessary, let's invest in some things like uh, special uh, relief ships that can bring power and clean water into a, uh, an island that's been hit or uh, uh, an airplane that can deliver uh, water bombing onto forest fires, whatever. There are things we could do that we don't do to get ready to be faster in responding. So Evander came along and decided that he would team up with us. And this is not just the typical endorsement where, you know, I'm going to wear a BitShares logo on my hat. No, this is a joint venture where we are building a company who's going to do this. And the chance to Very be nice. partnered with Evander is mind blowing in my, in my part. And I think setting a good example, we're starting to hear rumblings out there in the celebrity community of, hey, tell me more about that. So imagine what would happen if you could get 10 celebrities doing that and together they were building up a $10 billion uh, disaster preparedness fund. What a difference that could make next time a hurricane hits. Absolutely. I love it. It's very practical, very good cause, and doing it in a way that uh, says we're going to let the men of the mind 
take off and do it. And that's something that's covered in a little book that I happen to see on your bookshelf there behind your shoulder. That the idea that we can produce and we are going to use our mind, we're going to use our bodies, we're going to actually make good happen in the world. You are doing that, Stan. You're doing that, you and your team. And bit shares and other ways you've done it. We really appreciate all you're doing in the world of crypto space. And thank you so much for being with us today, sir. Thank you very much. I enjoyed it. And for those of you watching this, think about what we have just gone through. Stan is a man that we respect greatly. He is a person that lives the way to live life. What he has done is nothing short of amazing. Look into BitShares. See what it is. I want you to study it. I want you to look at what's out there and look what's right for you and get into that. Look at it and see what's available. I think you're going to be pleased. Thank you very much for joining me. I'm Terry Brock, and I will look forward to hearing from you.